Okay, before we get started, we will safety check the weapon. Magazine is clear. Chamber is clear. Magazine is clear. Everything is clear. The gun is safe. And we will treat it as such. And we will move on. Tonight I thought I'd make a video that uh, shows the restoration project that I did with my Detonix uh, 1911 style pistol. If you're not familiar with Detonix, it is a gun manufacturer that was based in Seattle, Washington. I believe the uh, guns were actually made in Tacoma, or it was at Bellevue, one of the two, but the company was based in Seattle. I am in Washington State, so I thought it would be a nice gun to own since it's a homegrown product. As you can see, it's a 1911 style pistol. There are a few differences, which I will address between this gun and a regular style 1911, and I will address that in the video. So uh, let's move, get started here, and I will show you how this gun started and show you how it ended up, which you can see here, and show you all the steps along the way. Okay, for those of you not familiar with the Detonix, uh, it is a 1911 style pistol. It's a very compact pistol. They do make different sizes, but this is their Combat Master size, which is a small pistol. It's actually the size of their Mark VI model, but this is an MC1, not a Mark VI. I'll tell you the difference here shortly. Uh, there are a few styling differences between the Detonix and a regular 1911 one of which is no grip safety. As you can see, there's just a filler there. There's no actual functioning grip safety. It does have this traditional frame mounted safety here. Slide lock, frame mounted safety. Works just like a regular 1911. The, the biggest difference though between these guns and a regular 1911 visually is that sight. As you can see, it's really pushed forward way forward. A lot of blank space there on the gun. They did that for one reason. This gun was manufactured at a time where it wasn't real popular to carry cocked and locked. It really People didn't really carry that way. It wasn't considered safe. So this gun was designed to be carried with the hammer down. The reason they put the sight forward is if you carry with the hammer down you're going to have, since it is a single action only pistol, you're going to have to cock the hammer manually to fire it. This was designed so that when you did that, you didn't rake your finger across the slide, tearing up the pad of your thumb. That is the only reason it was made that way. A lot of people wonder why it was done like that. There's your reason right there. It's just to give you a space where you can thumb cock the hammer without tearing up your thumb. But as you see there, those are the main differences between this and a standard 1911. There are some, we'll address the size of it here in a few moments. But uh, let's get on into some more things here. Uh, now I'd like to address the size of the gun. As you can see, it's a smaller 1911 style pistol. I'll show you some examples here to give you an example of what it looks like size-wise. Here is my Colt Combat Commander. This is a 4-inch 1911 with a standard size grip. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the Combat Commander. See, it's quite a bit larger than the Detonix. The Detonix is a more like an officer size model. And I have my officer's model right here to compare to it. As you can see, they're way more similar in size. There are some differences. As you can see, barrel lengthwise, frame uh, slide wise, they're about the same. The biggest difference is in the grip length. The grip is much bigger on the officer's model as you can see. The Tonix was a little ahead of their time in my opinion. Uh, they were one of the first gun manufacturers that figured out the hardest part of a gun to conceal is the grip. And they were making these guns when concealed carry wasn't all that popular. So shortening the grip, making it easier to conceal was kind of a little ahead of their time actually if you ask me. These, uh, a lot of gun manufacturers haven't figured that out yet. That Short barrel doesn't make a lot of difference. Short grip makes a huge difference in concealing it. But that gives you an idea of the size of the gun and uh, the features of the gun. So let's move on to the restoration itself. Okay, like I said, I always wanted a Detonix, but never could find one uh, in good condition that was affordable. And I don't mean one of the newer guns that they make in, I think it's Arizona or something, or Georgia or something. I mean one of the uh, actual original Seattle, Washington guns, like this one. 
don't know if you can see it or not. I'll try to zoom into it. It says Seattle. Right there on the side. I don't know if you can see that or not. But this is one of the original Seattle guns. Wanted one of the, the good Seattle guns here. I couldn't find one in good condition. I finally found this one. It's an MC1. It's not the Mark VI that everyone's familiar with. The MC1 is actually the, the same gun as the Mark VI. It's just not finished. And by not finished, I don't mean they didn't complete the gun. I mean they just slapped it together and threw it on the market. Rough finish. They, some call it a rough finish gun. The, the finish was really rough. Uh, it just wasn't polished at all. There were some real major flaws with this gun on the, cosmetically. There was some really major lines up here like a cast marker or tool mark of some sort right there. It looked like a seam. Uh, the top was rounded over in places. It completely lost the shape. Uh, the line was lost down the side of the gun here. Just a lot of flaws. There was some really cheap pencil engraving on the side that wasn't even even or well done. Uh, so I had to fix all that. I just had to sand the slide literally till my fingers bled. I had to reshape it, sand it, flush it out. Uh, after a lot of sanding, I finally got the markings off the side. I got the lines evened up on the top. Got the line brought back on the side there. Got all the marks out up here. Uh, once I did all that, I was able to sandblast the slide completely. Once I got the slide slam sandblasted, I had most of the shape down, so then I was just able to refine the shape uh, and then smooth out the edges so they weren't sharp edges. They're nice, smooth lines, but still a consistent, steady line. I got this polished out completely to where the, all those marks were gone. And then added some custom engraving on the side here. I'll see if you can see that. I don't know, but I've got a picture of it that shows it pretty well. Did that, took it to an engraver, had that done on there, cost like $8, but it uh, looked better than the pencil line engraving that was on it. Once I got the slide done, that was time to move on to the frame. Okay, once I had the slide done, I was able to move on to the frame. The frame didn't need nearly as much work as the slide did. It did have some really obvious marks on the front strapping here and up around the shroud on the trigger guard and everything but nothing like the the, the slide the, the slide had here uh, spent many an hour in front of the television set with some 600 grit sandpaper just sanding this finish smooth uh, there was some stubborn pitting on this area in this area but nothing too bad uh, got it out nothing like the pitting that was on the top of the slide the, the slide up here had some real bad pitting in this area or no way it was back here that took forever to get off uh, this went came off much easier, this down here. I uh, got this uh, all done up, did the same thing to it, sandblasted it, finished, then, then then smoothed out the finish. Got that all evened out. Once I had the slide and the frame done, then I was easy, able to move on to some more cosmetic things on the frame. So that's what I did next, was worked on a few little more cosmetic issues. A couple of the real cosmetic issues I had to work on was, one was the slide to frame fit. Back here at the back, the, the fit was not good. It was really bad. You can see now it's pretty flush. Uh, they just didn't bother to fit it, so I had to do that myself. I had to sand down the frame a little bit in the back to get it to line up with the slide. Uh, that's common in a manufacturing process, but they just didn't bother to do it with this gun, so there was a little overhang there. Got that filed out of there. Had to take actually a, a file and file that down. That was too much for sandpaper. Sandpaper wasn't going to handle that at all. And then I sandpapered it down, bead blasted it, everything. Another thing I had to deal with was the ejector. You can see here the ejector is nice and flush now. See that ejector there? It's a good flush fitting ejector now. But originally the ejector was in horrible, <laughs> horribly fit. I mean it stuck out an uh, eighth of an inch at least out the back of the gun. So I sanded that down got that flush. Once that was done, the gun was pretty much finished up. I uh, then just bead blasted the whole thing, gave it a nice, smooth, even finish. And I uh, wound up with the gun I have now. And I'm really proud of this gun. I can honestly say no one else has this exact gun. This started off as an MC1. Uh, now it looks better, in my opinion, than any Mark VI I've seen. Very nice looking gun. I hope this gun will someday 
passed down to my children and my grandchildren. My son will get it someday. Hopefully he'll keep it, pass it on to his. I hope I never have to part with it. I put so much work into it. But like I say, it's a very one-of-a-kind gun now. Pretty much a self-made custom. And uh, one of my favorites. One of the guns I would never want to part with. And uh, that's the restoration project. And uh, surprisingly, all it takes to do a project like this, a little bit of wet dry sandpaper, a cheap $7 bead blaster that you hook to an air compressor that you can buy at Home Depot, and that's and a file or two, and that's about it. Probably a total of like $20 worth of tools to do the whole job. And you've got a gun that looks like this when you're done. I would like to be able to find some nice Detonics grips. They make some grips that have the logo on them. I'd like to find those eventually, but haven't been able to. Or some bone grips would be great for this, too. But as it stands right now, I'm still happy with how it turned out. Like I say, it's one of a kind. Really proud of it. And uh, just wanted to show it to everyone here to show you what you can do with just a little bit of work on a really crappy looking gun. And you can end up with something like this with just a little elbow grease. And you've got something that you put a lot of work into you can take a lot of pride in. No, I do.